fat people who do heavy metal people. Green people, crab people who do heavy metal people. Green people, crab people who do heavy metal people. This is the Steamroller 2015 number two scenario called Two Fronts. There is Kill Box. You need five points to win. You get one for dominating your close zone, one for controlling the far zone, and two for dominating it. Uh, you can't do either of those, though, until you destroy the enemy objective. And if you do so, that's another control point. Hey there guys, this is Malorian, and this will be a crazy War Machine Wednesday where it's actually going to be on this side, Grail. You never see him being run by Chris. And the other side here, Derek is running Jarl. So two casters you don't very see very much. Uh, and some interesting list builds as well. They kind of said before, you know what, let's have some fun with this. So that's what they did. So you see there on the right, you know, the Jarl build there has all these big Mountain King and Glacier King and uh, some Gators in there because why not? And also the Thresher. This is the first time we've seen the Meat Thresher on the board. So the uh, Troll player, Derek, is going first, and pretty much things are running up here. I believe he has quickened up onto the Mountain King. That's why he got to go super duper fast. Uh, Tactical Supremacy was up onto the Gators, and something was onto <laughs> uh, the Glacier King there, but I can't remember what it was. Otherwise, Gerald's getting up behind that building. The battle engine is getting way up there. Uh, pulled a little bit back after, or try to get around the objective a little bit after we realized that the druids could probably pull it in, which would not be good. And uh, that's really it. So the big monsters are running up. Uh, it's not such a huge deal that the Mountain King's on the other side of a wall because of Quicken. He can get over it, so that's not really the end of the world. And now we're on a circle turn one, and we'll see what Grail can do. Grail is one of those casters you just never see. People just kind of say, like, oh, he sucks, and that's it. But the first thing that's going to happen here is he's going to put, actually, Grail go first, put Storm Ranger onto the uh, Lord of Feasts. Lord of Feasts is going to be teleported up with the stones. Then he's going to shoot here at the gator and do his thresher. And as he does that, he's going to be killing off some of these gobbers, doing a lot of damage to the the gator men and then buying attacks to finish off those two gator men and the other little uh, bellowers crew guy so very very devastating otherwise the uh, wolves oberos uh, moving up there on the left and the bottom you get the druids coming clouding up and uh, then finally you're gonna be having the stalkers come behind and those stalkers are gonna be key you know he's gonna need both of them alive if he wants to kill these big old uh, gargantuans so he has to be very careful with them so otherwise, uh, yeah, they both went for Prowl. The black one won't actually benefit really from that, uh, but the gray one was supposed to actually be behind the clouds, which doesn't really matter because then you can't see it. Whether you're stealth or just can't be seen, it's the same type of thing. And uh, right now, first thing that Derek said is, I'm pretty sure I can get one of your stalkers. So once he said that, that really did spook the circle player. And I think it could be possible. I think he could get to the black one for sure. Um, but the main thing is he has to kill off those stones to make sure they're not teleporting. And he has to be very careful that he, you know, you don't want to be getting uh, two stalkers now onto one of your gargantuans. But first, anyway, he's going to come in here and do an impact with his uh, meat thresher. That's just the thing there. And so that's going to do okay. Uh, but then he's going to start trying to go for some shots. He gets 2d3 shots. And he's only going to get 2. So that wasn't the best. He was hoping for more to get some damage from that. And I believe we're just rolling that out now. You can't really see it because uh, the circle player actually has a fancy little dice tower he's using at the bottom here. Interesting little thing. He's magnetized together. So, did a little bit of damage here, nothing super solid. A little bit of damage, you know, not too bad. Uh, also comes in here, try going after the, the Lord of uh, Feasts, and does like one box of damage. Uh, yeah, even with Cold Blooded, it just was not working. Like, he does have some tokens, so his armor is higher, but still. And now Jarl's getting very dangerous. Coming up here, uh, and want to take some shots, but his actual target is the stone. And that's a really good idea, because you really want to kill that stone. But the same time i really feel like the glacier or Mount mountain king can actually do that because he can just assault in and spray and destroy it for sure with the spray 
Um, so he's going to be trying to shoot some regular guys and then be doing some magic bullets to hop over. And I don't believe he does any damage to the stone at all. If he does, maybe one point. And the nice thing he has is that whenever he hits something, he can back away. So he kind of gets in range of the stalker and then backs away. Uh, next, the mountain king, king's going to come in and he's going to assault, go after the stone here and everything else. Um, he's doing like H to hit or something. I can't remember, but he does kills like one guy. Uh, and then imagines to boost and kill the stone. So the stones are down. They're not going to teleport anything. And now he wants to kill at least one guy. So he buys an attack or makes sure he kills the guy that he was touching here. And now he gets to spray again. And so this could have been really deadly. Although, of course, that pretty poor uh, rat is going to hold them back. And then finally, the Mountain King is going to come up here. Uh, the terrain definitely is a factor here. I believe the Circle won the initiative, and they picked the left side. So uh, the Troll player is kind of stuck with all the buildings and walls and stuff here on the right. Otherwise, he tries to do a little bit more shooting to the Stalker. He was out of range. And that's really it. So we're at this point here now where the stone is down. He can probably get a Stalker to the, the Earthborn for sure. Uh, Earth, uh, Mountain King, rather. And then the bottom one probably just has to go after that Meat Thresher. I mean, if something else could attack the Meat Thresher and take it out first, then maybe you could get that Stalker to the Glacier King. But at the end of the day, that's not what you really want. Especially with the Glacier King, where one hit stationaries you, and then that, uh, Stalker just be dead. But otherwise, at the top, he's first going in there with the wolves. They're going for their little mini feet so they get an extra dice of damage or whatever. And they do some really solid damage. So that Mountain King is really, really hurting. The, uh, what you call it? <laughs> the Lord of Feasts, he goes and kills the last gator. And then because of Virtuoso, he also shoots the Mountain King and comes in as well. Uh, he's making a whole bunch of those guys there in the back, the little whelps. He was hoping that he'd be able to get over there and have room with that uh, Lord of Feast to go and thrasher and kill them and stuff, but that just didn't really work. Otherwise, here, we're trying to figure out how it's going to work with, with, with Morag here, because he wants to charge in, do some damage, but the, the angle just isn't really right, so he's going to walk up and attack, and actually, he's going to fail. He's not going to hit the Mountain King, and he's not going to hit a Whelp. So, double ones happen, and uh, there you go. But either way, he does have a Stalker that can still go. I believe here, yeah, he was primaled to really make sure that this Mountain King goes down. And yeah, after all these guys going in, it's too much. And so the Mountain King is down, and that's a massive blow to the Troll player. Um, it's not necessarily out of the fight yet, because you still have a Glacier King. But now he's going to be going with the Bottom Stalker, the gray one that's not primaled. It's going to be making attacks against the Meat Thresher and able to kill it. So that's two of the huge bases down. And uh, Jarl's probably in a little bit of trouble. He's lost a lot. He's lost his posse. He's lost his Mountain King. He's lost his Bellowitz crew. And uh, yeah, it's not really the best. And so now he's just really making sure there's things in the way so the Glacier King can't really get in there. Um, Grail also popped his feet, so everything is stealth. And that's going to be the huge thing here. I mean, Grail normally has stealth, but now everything has stealth. And uh, that's not something that the troll player wants to deal with. So here he did make a little mistake that we saw where the, the clouds weren't really touching. Just a little simple thing. But again, with so much stuff in the way and the stealth, it's just not going to be working out very well for the troll player. So we're now on a troll's turn two. And they got to find some way to unlock this puzzle. He would love to find some way to get down here to a stalker because if Jarl could go first and if he could go and clear things out and uh, allow him to get the Glacier King to the stalker, that would be amazing because, of course, a top stalker will be frenzying because of Primal, uh, but it just doesn't seem like it's going to be there. Uh, it does Jarl's going first. He does kill the tree, get that out of the way, did a magic bullet or something, and it went in there and also went and uh, killed the druid. And then he's able here to walk up here with the Glacier King, and he's within five inches. So he can see the stalker. So he's going to boost 
the hits, trying to, you know, knock him down and stuff. But he's just going to push him back. He's going to be still barely in range to shoot again. And so he'll shoot him again, boosting again, trying to knock him down. But really, it's just going to push him back again. And then he can't shoot another time because, again, with stealth, he's outside of five inches now. And uh, that's really it. So he did kill a little bit of stuff, but not very much. We're now on to circle turn two. And he does have one primal stalker, which will end up, like, killing one guy. Meh. But otherwise, the Lord of Feast comes in, and he kills off all these whelps. They're kind of in here and in the way. That Virtuoso thing is actually pretty damn good. He clears out a lot of stuff. When I played Circle, I didn't play too much of the Lord of Feast, but he's uh, really, really good. In fact, he was more of a, a test model being used here by the Circle player, and he kind of fell in love with it as well. So otherwise, he's going in there with Moreg as well. He's all over the left zone, so he could go in there and uh, dominate for one. But he really wants to kind of go in here and find a way to kill this Glacier King. So now he's going to be primaling the bottom stalker. And he took a lot of damage. A lot of damage. He only had eight left, but he has all of his systems still going. Just one of those type of things where you never hit the right column. And now when he comes in here and buying attacks, he cranks it on this guy. Leaves him with just a little bit left. I was kind of tempting him. Like, come on, Grail, go do it. But he actually wants to charge in with druids and finish off the Glacier King with druids. Because that was like two boxes or something. So in come the druids. And I believe it's like the first one which does the damage and kills a Glacier King. And so now it's just really, really, really bad. Uh, Grail is going to be moving over here to the one side. Uh, dominating for one point. And now pretty much Jarl has to go. And there's only really Jarl. And with Grail camping three, there's not much he can really do. It's just him and the rune bear. Uh, he, like, normally he said he would just, like, throw in the towel. But, you know, hey, why not? Let's go out in a blaze of glory. And he's going to be start shooting some things down. So he'll shoot some things around Grail just to kind of make him be scared. Stuff will move out of the way. And then I guess they would have technically scored another point to go to two. But now Grail is going to come and charge in. And with... Yarl not camping anything. It seemed like it was going to be simple, uh, but uh, he's going to start toughing over and over and over, uh, something like three times, but in the end, he is going to eventually kill Jarl and win by assassination. Uh, thank you for putting up with my shenanigans. Oh, <laughs> this was a lot of fun, right? Like, <laughs> So the game just ended here on Scenario, so what are you guys' thoughts on the game? Uh, yeah. Not on Scenario. No. Oh, sorry. Just on assassination. Grail got I'm the sorry. job done. Yeah. <laughs> the best caster in the game. Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> After Yarl topped, what, six times, five times? <laughs> five <Yeah>. times, yeah. <laughs> Makes you worry there. Uh, so, um, both of you guys kind of brought some interesting lists for this, but, uh, I mean, I don't know if that was even part of your planning, but, like, let's say for the draw list, what would you say normally is, like, the, the win condition you're looking for here? It would be more assassination or just attrition? I'm going to be honest. I had really no idea because I didn't really know what I was coming to face. Um, I was going to attempt to try to basically out attrition him which i mean was working okay but primal stalkers are a thing mm -hmm. um there's not a whole lot you can yeah do about that against two gargantuans so yeah it is what it is although the um what is it the meat wagon no meat thresher uh did get in the way a lot that was uh it, it, it was much more effective than i thought it would be very few things kill druids in melee in their druids clouds <laughs> and like I mean, I spiked dice like nuts on it, but it's it's pretty hardy, right? Uh, yeah, and I mean, it wasn't the best place to put it in, but I would have much rather had it go into the, um, what are they, the, the wolves. Yeah, but, it would have murdered the but, wolves. But, I mean, with pre-deploying or whatever, yeah. going first, I mean, you can counter-deploy your wolves, so it's not That's bad. actually one of the reasons I, I decided to go second in this matchup, because, oh, okay. like, one, I really didn't want you to have these walls. Because then Jarl hides behind one, and Grail can't get to him. <laughs> and uh, I didn't like the, like, I, I really want to be able to pick the matchup and, like, what I got into what. Mm -hmm. So, that was a thought. <clears throat> and how about for, like, your win condition going in? Was this more of an assassination list? This figure? list, I think, 99% of the time will win by assassination. Uh, Morag can do it. Lord of the Feast can do it. Grail can do it. Stalkers can do it. Mm -hmm. 
because uh, Storm Rager turns any of those models into a bonafide assassination threat. Less so against hordes than War Machine. Mm -hmm. Morag really doesn't get the job done against against hordes very often. He'll force a transfer probably, maybe two if they're they put a cleave target there. Yeah. But most of the time, like I'm gonna try this just again. I think because like honestly, I took it because you mentioned that he was taking something fun. So I was like. Well, I don't want to bring my tournament pairings, so <laughs> I'll build the best Grail list I can, and we'll see what happens. But Grail's actually really fun. The inherent stealth was really cool. Made me feel very, very, very safe. And with mm. the amount of shooting I had, it was very difficult to work around. Yeah. So, I mean, with, what are they, the, the croaks and stuff all everywhere, I could actually see that being a, an issue for them. Yeah, and, like, because we were just talking about that, we said, like, croak raiders are probably going to define the meta the next six months until they get slammed with the nerf bat. Like, just slam. I don't we'll know. see. I'd, we'll see. I'd be surprised, honestly, if it happens. It's what everyone said about warders. No. I don't mm. think so. Uh, they're better than warders were. Mm. Croak Raiders are better than warders were. I, okay, I play a lot of shooting, so I'd rather go against Croaks, because I can kill them easily. Yeah. So maybe I'm in a different <laughs> mindset. But, but they're, the, they're, the, <laughs> they're the equivalent to warders, though, right? Warders could never die to shooting, so shooting gutless hated them. Croaks never die to melee. They always just trade so well with melee. Mm -hmm. But I like this list in that. It's fun. It's more fun than playing Ravana, certainly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for playing, and thanks for bringing out something different. And for those watching, thanks for watching. Bye.